Oh, better than I would have been delayed. Okay, I'll call the meeting to order for the uh, planning and board of adjustment meeting in place of uh, our chairperson who is absent today. Um, let the minutes reflect that everybody else is here. Uh, has everybody had a chance to review? The minutes of last meeting. Any corrections or changes suggested? No. no. Motion to approve. So the minutes. Moved. moved and seconded. The meeting, uh, the minutes of last month's meeting are approved. Liaison, liaison report. Mike's not here, but. So. Patrick. December 2nd City Council meeting, uh, you had, uh, we had a presentation on the uh, presidential nomination primary. That's going to be held March 3rd. There are four candidates on that election. Um, and you know, so you'll have to identify who you're going to vote for. Again, you can only vote for one presidential primary, one individual in the presidential primary. There will be four parties. Two are marijuana are us, and one in Republican and one is Democrat. Um, I apologize for not knowing the exact name of the minutes for marijuana today and marijuana. Uh, we had a variety of uh, setting fees, motions, setting, we are required by law now to establish our polling places. Percy Point is pretty simple, City Hall. Went through the budget presentation. Uh, the City Council did adopt the preliminary levy as yeah, the final levy for about a 16.6% increase. Uh, that puts us at a 48% I'm sorry, 46% tax rate, uh, which is 4% over last year. Uh, still on the bottom end of the county for tax rates. Really uh, still working on citizen of the year. There was some discussion about potential to for the city council to oppose marijuana sales in the city of Breezy Point. Did, in any one of those, there was no action. We did reappoint the city engineer, WSN. Joe Dubel is his name and he will continue to work with us. Um, and then under road committees number two was resolution 1926 cooperative road agreement. That is the Bushman Road Project. And we are working with Pequot Lakes, Ideal Township, and Jenkins Township with the potential to determine if there are abilities to work together to rebuild that road. Uh, Bushman Road was paved in 1996. It's more than 20 years since it was paved and we can tell you that when it was initially paved, there wasn't a great deal of base work done. It was just essentially overlaying the two and a half inches of bituminous. And it is past its time. Uh, Pequot has, the city of Pequot has identified that they're going to do some work in 2021 on their portion of the roads. And so the idea is if we can all work together and schedule our work together, maybe the potential is there to get a larger project. The goal would ultimately be to improve the road to county standards and the county would take it over, much like they did on Fawn Lake Road to Cross Lake. Um, that is yet to be seen, but it was nice that we've got all the parties working together. And also, uh, County Commissioner Bill Brecken was in the audience. Uh, he's our representative and says he wants to be continued to be notified of what's going on with that situation. Then ultimately, we did also accept a Resolution 1927 City Council approved that for the improvements to Asawan Miniki, Grab, and Sunset Strips. It's a joint project with Ideal Township. It's county engineers designed, except for Grab and Sunset, we're working together um, to do phase two of what Ideal started this last year. I'd be more than willing to address any questions the council has, but that was kind of just a quick summary of what happened. And just for everybody's purposes, all city council meetings and planning commission meetings are on YouTube, so you can always catch what's going on at a later date or at any time when you get to, to get to sleep. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? No. I, I, oh, I, go ahead. Uh, you, you said you went through the, the mill levy and what have you, and you said you're, the city is at the lower end of the county, of the cities within the county on increases in taxes? Our tax rate at 46% is above uh, Nisswa at 36, Cross Lake at 32, 
and then everybody else is at 56, all the way up to, well, I mean, yeah. Baxter's at 56, Pequot's at 57, Brainerd's at 88, and then you get up to Ironton at over 100. The, the only reason I ask is I noticed, you know, the city's port went up 15 percent, yes. and I had a number of people who got their savings and couldn't believe it go up 15 yep. percent. The idea there was, and we went through it both at the preliminary and at the general meeting, um, the city council adopted a $216,000 project, excess levy let's call it. So the playground equipment back here, that's over 200 or close to $200,000 to replace. So they budgeted 60,000 to do that in incremental steps. The Bushman Road project, they're putting 30,000 towards that. Roads, parks, what uh, improvements to the city, not extra staff, not anything like that, but what, what the council is identifying is delayed projects. Okay, thank you. Explain the 46%, what is that? The 40% not increase. <laughs> no, okay. no our, our tax rate was at 42%. And it's now going up to 46, even though our levy is going up 16%. Minnesota has one of the most complex calculations determined tax rate. And they think this, they made the change in 1999 and they thought they were making it simpler, but they actually didn't. They used to use a mill rate, which everyone had gotten used to. There's a now a complex formula that works on tax capacity. And so our tax capacity, if you figure 100% is what they, is 100 is what it is. However, like I said, their city's already at 100 plus the county plus the school district rate. Um, it gives you an idea just so you can compare apples to apples from one city to another and what each city is taxing at. So it's 40, whatever, 46. 46% 46 of the property's value. Property's value. Tax capacity. Tax capacity. Value. There's a market value, yeah. there's a tax capacity rate, okay. tax capacity. Right. Anytime you want to come in, I'd be happy to show you. It's very complex. It's, <laughs> it's easier to see on paper and try to figure it out. Than, uh, but it's just one way to, to, to know what your city is, is charging, and that's why the state adopted this newer system. Thank you. One other question. The primary, can you get absentee balance for a primary? Yes is going to be the answer. We just haven't got received all the details of our training yet for, okay. for that. But there will be absentee ballots for this situation. Okay. We had training in January. What's that? We had the training in January. Yeah. So. Um, okay, we will now have open forum number one if there's anybody who wants to get up and uh, speak their mind on issues of the city. Uh, if you do, come up and give your name and address. No, oh, I don't have a kind of just going to switch. Oh, okay. Hearing none, we will close open forum number one. Public hearing. Uh, public hearing is to consider the recommendation to approve the City of Breezy Point's uh, point draft comprehensive plan. Uh, I guess this is where you guys take over? Yes, I just need one moment, please. Hey, Ashley, can you want to swing over here? They made some minor modifications to their presentation, and so that's why we're using Jake's machine rather than the signature. Okay, that would be great. There. All right. Well, again, my name is Jake Hipsch. Um, that is Ashley. We're both with Sourcewell. We are here to kind of present um, the comprehensive plan. Uh, the idea would be to, if, the, uh, if it's uh, comfortable with the Planning Commission, um, that recommendation tonight will go to the City Council for full vote in January. But just to kind of put a little kind of backspin or what we've been working on, you want to go to the next slide, Ashley? So the Breezy Point comprehensive plan process began in 2018. Um, we launched that with a, with a steering committee that's made up of members of Planning Commission, City Council, representation from the city to kind of help steer and guide that project. Um, this plan will ultimately replace the plan that was adopted by the City Council in 2016. And this really provides a lot of goals and strategies that were developed through uh, a lot of citizen input. Uh, we had a survey 
uh, a lot of public engagement. Ashley's going to speak on that in a moment. Um, so for tonight, we just got a, a short presentation. Uh, we're actually going to show a video here. Um, and then we're going to take questions and comments uh, from whether it's citizens or the Planning Commission about the plan. Next slide, please. So this, is, uh, this slide will look a little different than the one that you received in your packet. I just added a few bullet points. This slide really shows uh, just kind of a snapshot of the last few months and then into January of what, what the time frame looks like for uh, adoption. So you may remember back in October, a lot of you received uh, uh, lots of emails that we call block text. Um, what we do is we send you a lot of the narrative for the comprehensive plan. We really want to flush out, um, address any comments or questions at that stage. So we received a lot of comments in that, in that block text format. From there, what we do is we actually start marrying that with the design of the document. That's where we put in images, graphs, pictures, um, kind of maybe something a little bit more visually appealing. November, so kind of backing up to last month, that's when we opened, we released that document for a 30-day public comment period. Um, that's the opportunity for members, planning commission members, city council, anybody, um, other jurisdictions to review and comment on the plan. So we take those comments and we keep refining the plan. You may see October, November, December all have one thing in common, document refinement. You know, that's again, we're hopefully addressing all the comments, whether it's spelling, grammar, spacing, punctuation, we're really refining that document. Um, and even in January, sometimes there's, there's, even when the plan is approved, you know, there's a period or a comma, you know, we'll, we'll make those updates as well. So in December, where we are now, we have a public hearing. That's where we're at today. Um, again, this is the opportunity to uh, discuss the plan, talk about any comments, questions, concerns, um, and then we'll move forward with that based on the outcome of, of the meeting tonight. Um, let's see, I think that's it, next slide. One of the things that we do throughout this process is kind of document the, document the process, uh, do a snapshot of the community, kind of interview people, um, really look at what Breezy Point is. Um, and we do that through pictures. Uh, we have our videographer coming to a lot of community events like the butterfly release, airport days, um, interviewing council people. So what we're gonna do now is actually show a video. Can I get the lights on, on there? Oh, that'll be perfect, right there. And so this is a, a community video that really kind of captures Breezy Point. Um, this can be used for just a promotional for the city, it can be for welcoming new people. Um, one of the things that we heard through the planning process was uh, people really wanted to improve kind of the, the, uh, the image of the city away from the resort, right? Having its own identity. Uh, we, that was definitely a common theme that we heard. Again, this is a, a way, one way to do that. So, with that, uh, Ashley, if you want to play it, it's about a three and a half minute video. You have to hit the actual play button in the middle. What? I don't know if you are. <laughs> It works during when we tested it. Watch now. Maybe it's because it's cold. Mm -hmm. Try one more time. If not, we have a backup plan here. Sorry. See a button that says watch now. Our start. Our start. Right. Mm -hmm. there we, go. we even tested it and it worked. It's right in the heart of Minnesota, but at the same time, we're so based around tourism. So, so many people don't even know that we're a city. We have been vacationing up here for quite a few years, and uh, we just really like the area. We moved up here in 2007, and we never looked back. 
Breezy Point is just an awesome place to be. I mean, it's, it's so much fun. There's always something going on here. We have a private airstrip that's 3,250 feet long. We do aviation days for the youth. It's called Young Eagles. We give them their first flight. It's free. We have released 200 butterflies. It started around 15 years ago. They were looking for something to bring attention to the cemetery, and they won't be around the cemetery for days. Or you might find them in your yard. We decided that we wanted to live somewhere with a really good school, with a smaller community, so that when my kids were in school, they could really get to know all their kids in their class. So I'm a fourth grade teacher. I kind of coordinate and oversee our school nature center, which we're standing in right now. And I like to find cool insects and discover more things in the wilderness. There's like a room that hasn't been opened, so when you open it, there's no more inside. The cold doesn't have an end of the fire, you can find the end of it. We moved to Breezy Point because of my work, um, and I'm the superintendent of a school district, a uh, fabulous school district. Uh, and we chose Breezy Point because we found a place we love. I can live a rural lifestyle uh, and still be very professional and engage in a very active community. When I travel around the country and oftentimes around the world, when the name Breezy Point comes up, people know the name. They're yeah, from Jamaica, originally from Jamaica, Jamaica. <laughs> My friend and I we chose to, you know, take a trip here. It was so beautiful because just like we see it on the photos in the pictures, that was actually what it was like when we got here. Breezy Point is, it, it has three golf courses. That's pretty unique for, for one small community. It's, it's very special to have a, an Arnold Palmer Design golf course. You can go from Lakeshore Recreational to basically living in the woods when you get uh, away from the lake. Don't forget that there's a few little hidden jewels in Breezy Point, like the Frisbee golf course that we have right in the heart of Breezy. You know, I live 23 miles away, but it's definitely worth it. I come up, we've been up here every week in the spring, and summer, and fall for the last two years. I love this golf and every day. You can't beat this like hilly, not anything home to have on earth. Breezy Point is just an awesome place to be. Having the North Stars here, it, it's a lot of fun for us. We get to do a lot of stuff in the community, and when you go to the ice rink, you, you can do a lot of stuff. I skate with the Breezy Point Free Skating Club. I've skated for six years, so I've just gotten more into it. I just love the community. I love the people. Golf, water, entertainment, dining, friends, family, fellowship. It's all here in Breezy Point. It's just a great place. So as we're, we'll switch back here, but uh, so definitely kind of really captures the community. Um, we're really, really happy with how that video turned out and, and hopefully you are too, definitely a good representation. Um, we had another community that we worked with that did one of these, one of these videos and they <coughs> uploaded it through Facebook and just shared it through that. And it was a matter of about, I don't know, it was pretty minimal, like six weeks. They actually had over like 28,000 views um, on that. So, and the nice part of it, it's, it can, it's free, kind of free marketing for the city once you kind of upload that and use some um, social media outlets. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of opportunity there. Um, I'm gonna turn over to Ashley now. She's gonna talk just a little bit more about the process and um, some of the community engagement. The smiles of that video always brings our, our Pond team is pretty incredible. I just think it's a great way that it really can elevate this, this process. I know that sometimes when we're in the thick of plan making, it's, it's easy to remember the importance of asset-based research and visiting with folks so they can share their true testimony of time. But, or uh, their true testimony of town. So I just want to speak a little bit to the process of, of uh, long range planning in general. Very much as a process, doesn't happen overnight. Uh, we had our first meeting in July of 2018, so we're at an 18 month process. So we really can break down long range planning into three buckets. We took a three pronged approach. Um, phase one is really inventory and analysis. We're digging into data, we're reaching out to our residents to get a pulse on some of the qualitative and quantitative um, data in town. 
Um, step number two is goal and strategy development and um, plan preparation. The steering committee showed incredible leadership when they broke down every goal and policy. Tracy. It went through line by line of all of the, um, the recommendations that we put forward and they really crafted and fit the goals and policies to make sure that it fit town. It was an awesome process for Jake and I to sit back and watch the team work together and bounce off um, ideas to make sure that we're crafting a scalable solution for Breezy Point into the future. And then step three was that plan, plan refinement and adoption. You all had felt some of that. Jake touched on the September, October, November, December, and upcoming January of that plan making. That's really that sausage making process of when we create these final documents, there's a lot that goes into them. But really, that's the tail end of a long process. Next, please. Um, regarding community input, um, I hope you all had an opportunity to participate in the process. There was a great deal of opportunities. Um, this, is, this is a list of the qualitative outputs. Um, we've had hundreds of lines of input from residents, hundreds of lines. Um, we held eight steering committee meetings. We had one large community survey. 315 people participated. We were really proud of that response. Uh, we had one community open house. That was the open skate night. Um, we had four focus groups. We met with our business community, our roads committee, parks committee. You all had a meeting here as well. And then we had two fun pop-up events. We were at the butterfly release and then also at airport days. So our steering committee, as well as our planning team, we're, we feel really confident that we heard what the, what the community um, envisioned for, their, for the future here. So we heard that folks want to maintain, uh, to protect the natural resources and the scenery, your sense of community, recreation opportunities to maintain your water, water quality and to maintain your safe neighborhoods. But then there was also a list of items that folks wanted to improve. They wanted to improve year-round employment opportunities, business expansion and retention, retail options, your motorized and non-motorized trail networks, expand your housing options, and then improve road maintenance. With regards to how your document is structured, um, you can see your chapter list 1 through 11 and it's a little different than how your 2016 plan is structured. You had a large chapter on land use and community design and we pulled out some of those elements. <coughs> so now you have a land use, you have a housing and you have an infrastructure chapter. Um, you also have three new chapters, community services and facility, uh, facilities, you have a community character chapter, you have an economic development chapter which is new to your plan. And then you have a, um, a redesign implementation chapter. That's, a, that's your really heavy lift in your comprehensive plan that shows your steps towards action. That's your how-to guide. Um, and it's, it's crafted based on your goals and policies throughout every single plan element in the document. Do you want to click on that? I think yep. that works. So to build on the community video, to really enliven your comprehensive plan so folks can always have um, a, a finger on your document, is we created a flip book. Um, so instead of folks going online to download a PDF. It's not, uh, it's reading here, but it's not reading there. It's an online platform where it flips the page for you. So it, it kind of brings your plan more into 3D, a little bit more user friendly, and has a really fun sounds like you're flipping the page. It's just, just a next level to review the plan itself. It makes it a little bit more, um, it gives it the ability to travel better. So we can share that outwards and you guys can play around with it. Um, but nonetheless, I want to touch on the importance of your comprehensive plan as a workbook and as a tool. We don't plan in stone for a reason. Your comprehensive plan is meant to be used, it's meant to be worn, it's meant to spill your coffee on, it's meant for you to highlight, it's meant for you to make notes on. Um, we wanted to really design your plan so it can be used as a workbook. So I encourage you all, if you've completed a goal, cross it off, check it. Whatever brings you joy to show that you accomplished something and then celebrate that moment. Um, plans are also most effective when they're consistently referenced and used. We would encourage you to meet as a, as a committee um, every year to go through 
what have you done in the last year? It's not meant to be a report card, but it's meant to be a document that is continuously evolving. And if you find that you want to do an amendment to your document, feel comfortable to do so. It's meant to be a living document, and it is meant to change over time. So with that, sorry about some of the technology. We, we did try this ahead of time, and it worked. But the links are not working. There was this is the PDF document. Mm -mm. It's actually the PowerPoint. Yeah. Well, this is if you pulled up the. Um, you're just pulling up something different from what we have here. You see, pulling up the actual document. Oh, then it should work. Yeah, I don't know why it's not. It's yeah. not reading it. But um, so the document again is it's kind of like a magazine when you're looking at it. It's, it's meant to look look like that. Um, but we did receive comments from the planning commission as well as. Um, Peggy, I believe you provided comments um, that we received. But actually, in reality, we didn't really receive too many comments during the public comment period. Whether that's good or bad, I guess I don't know. Um, definitely, a lot of the comments were uh, hopefully refined through when we sent out that block text. We know it's kind of challenging, but you know maybe that's why we didn't really receive a ton of comments during the public comment period is because they were addressed in that first phase. But we did put together kind of a memo, and I'm assuming everyone on the planning commission uh, received kind of the memo. We tried to address uh, some of the questions that were mentioned at the last planning commission. Um, and I know we're going to probably dive into these as well. Um, and I do know that uh, we're going to have a little discussion about population. Uh, I know Jerry had a question about population um, and how that's represented in the plan. So now, this is kind of our opportunity to either uh, address any questions, comments, concerns um, that you have, um, and take notes. You know, we do have the opportunity, you know, it's, uh, we have about three weeks before the next planning commission, or excuse me, before the council meets. Um, so we do have some time to, again, refine that document even further, uh, address any comments or concerns that, that, that you have. So at that, now we're just gonna ask, um, you, if there's questions or comments that we can help you better understand, or if there's things that we need to take back to refine the document, um, and then if you're okay, Jerry, I'll put you on the spot maybe in a, in a moment here um, about your question and determining how we want to move forward with that about population projections. So, Ashley, do you have anything to add to any of that? So what they're seeing on the screen right now is the actual response that you had that was included in the packet uh, on the different areas where you addressed the planning commission's <laughs> questions. And then the next page is the start of the conference plan itself. One of the, uh, uh, thank you Peggy for, for going through in, so, in such great detail. Um, we went through and made a lot of those refinements. We appreciate that. You probably are not going to see all of those identified in this summary. Um, most of your comments were spelling, grammar, spacing related. Um, we appreciate those. Again, we want to make sure the document is, is the best document that it can be. But those comments are, are not going to be reflective in just this memo. But they, I would say probably 95% of them were addressed in the, in the document. So, but officially for our agenda purposes, we would need uh, Larry to open the public hearing. Okay. <clears throat> the public hearing is open. We're going to note that it's 728. There's any more review of the plan. We want to do that now. Yeah, I would say if there's questions, comments, or concerns that, that um, that we need to discuss at this time. And surely on our agenda, after you make the review of the draft plan, then it's the public comments and then commissioner questions. Okay, sorry, let's see the agenda. So does anybody have any questions or concerns? You want to go to the public first. Oh, usually don't we go first? On your agenda. On okay. the agenda, it says public comments. Yeah. Okay. Any comments from the public? That was easy. 
Okay, any uh, commission questions? My question would be, there are not many folks from the public here. Is that indicative of anything that we should be concerned with or was notice out and everybody know about it? I, I kind of in my mind identified, you know, about five or six people I thought might be here. And I think only two of them are here. <laughs> I, think I don't know what you do about it. Working with a variety of us and four of us that have worked on different comprehensive plans, this is a pretty good turnout for city our size. Okay. Yeah, especially when it's 12 degrees below zero. <laughs> <laughs> I would echo what Patrick said. This is, uh, you know, generally for a public comment period on a comprehensive plan, this is pretty normal. Okay. If people look at it, they probably are saying, gee, that looks pretty good. Uh, I had one question that we talked about, or I brought up, and I guess Tracy brought it up, but I had it noted before. On page 53, uh, uh, goal two, strategy four, under, it's under housing. Um, I think both Tracy and I had the concerns of uh, uh, that item four, getting into subsidized type rental and I wanted I was hoping that we could get the wording of that thing changed uh, from uh, working with the county and regional housing agencies to provide assistance for construction of affordable housing now there's some something similar to a tip I don't think it's in breezy's best interest to uh, encourage a subsidized rent unit in the community that's just my opinion and we talked about it last week I, I thought it would get changed but that was the one thing when i opened up the document i went to look to see if that item got addressed and it it stayed the same am i showing it here on this page here um uh -huh. yes goal yeah strategy strategy four and or uh, a goal two Did you want to see in there, Larry? Um, to have it where it says to provide instead of funding assistance, provide uh, funding for construction of affordable housing. In other words, that would be like a tip, where we're not we're not having the renter get the the uh, subsidy, but we get the 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 builder to get some kind of a subsidy to help make the unit affordable. I think we see in other communities when you have a lot of uh, uh, assisted living type communities, uh, we become a welfare state. Some people like that, some people don't. Do you really want that? I don't want the welfare states. No, but you don't want to subsidize the builder either. Why not? If that's what it takes to get housing to help uh, uh, the community for hiring jobs, but not having people that come in here and uh, basically live off the community but don't even work. I'm thinking if you've got it, if you've got the affordable housing uh, where the workers can come in and they pay their own rent, uh, they stay working. Basically, right. to allow them to build the facility for less money, therefore they can rent. Can rent for less. less. That's what a tip would do. Is a tip or tiff? Tip. Tiff. So this is your meeting. If you would like specific words changed or pages changed, that's your okay. direction to make. I will make the motion that we make those changes, and hopefully we'll get some of the with me. You want to. Define uh, the motion a little okay. bit more closely. I make a motion that we change under on page 53, goal two, strategy four, to read, work with county and regional housing agencies to provide funding for construction assistance for, for affordable housing. I would second that motion. Any further discussion? My question would 
be that however the wording goes, no matter what we do here, we need to be aware of whatever federal guidelines or, you know, um, specifically, for example, like subsidizer. Right. right. And, and that would be my concern that we make sure that whether it be to assist individuals or developers that we're staying carefully within whatever our federal laws and guidelines. I know they would like to see right. more and, uh, different housing. And even with that rewording, I think if we were going to uh, provide any assistance to a contractor, uh, we, we would have to follow federal guidelines and county guidelines and so on. Isn't that right, Jerry? Patrick? So I know we're, we're, we can't go outside of the law. This just doesn't encourage looking for uh, subsidized rent. Don't I remember that um, some months back when we had somebody come in, uh, this was before Babinski, and they were looking to build some housing, and they were looking at things like, I'm just clarifying what you're saying, if this is what you mean. They were looking, for example, like we uh, give a lower rate for the permitting, for example, or that kind of thing. Is that what you're looking right. at? Right, in other words, anything that would, would make it easier for, and again I don't think that deal is totally dead well this is, I'm not talking about Babinski I'm talking about the people who came in before that okay when we were looking at the I think it was when we were looking at the lots right I think they were they were looking to get forgiveness of assessments I think so also and that would be another possible way to do it um, but I just wanted to clarify that's the kind of thing you're talking about I, I think so. I'm not sure if I was even at that other meeting. But. You might not have been. They, they were looking to get, you know, some reduction, to keep the, the housing they wanted to build low, and they were looking for a reduction, in that case, in assessments. Mm -hmm. But I know in other communities... It's, yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about, and whether we could do it or we couldn't do it. But I just didn't want to get the... the, the it's almost too open the way it's worded in there, and I would like to tighten that up a little bit. How do you budget that? Jerry, I don't know. We kind of did when we had that last housing project. We said that the, the, his goal and idea was is that they do not have subsidized rental Section 8 type in, in that uh, housing development that they're going to do. Their issue was subsequently was is can they get some kind of a break in uh, uh, some of the, either the regulations by the city or uh, assistance maybe in helping pay for the... the the septic or road or whatever it would be, I think that's kind of what they were looking for. And like I say, I don't think the thing is dead, but I think that's the kind of rental that we want to look for. And that uh, a few months back that the uh, mayor was encouraging too, when we look at how can we get some affordable uh, rental to assist the businesses in the community to be able to hire people more easily. Because I, I know for one, Breezy Point has a heck of a time sometimes getting enough people to, uh, uh, keep the resort running as nice as they'd like it. So we've had a motion and a second, and we've had discussion. Is there any other discussion? All in favor? Jerry, you've oh. got a question. Can Jerry. I, can I ask you to repeat your motion? <laughs> sure you can. Uh, you know where I'm, where I'm talking about now, right? And number four? Work with county and regional housing agencies to provide assistance for construction of affordable housing. Thank you. Got it? Okay. Uh, we've had a motion and a, and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Any other of those topics that similar to this from the from the commission page 39 on the goal four line five I, was wondering if we could, I don't know it says review and revise development of standards to encourage revise so it kind of makes it sound like we're going to revise it goal four Line five, see the review and revised development standards to encourage growth by ensuring 
you know, lot size, blah, blah, blah. But to meet the needs of the businesses, wouldn't it be just review? Do we have to revise? Does it revise kind of make it sound like we have to do it? I don't know. I guess the question is, do we have development standards? <laughs> We're looking at you. So, I mean, when you look at the section five or the I, I the line five, five yeah. it talks about lot sizes, pervious right. ratio setbacks. Those are all things that we already have in place. So then it would require so revises, so it does belong in there then? As necessary. So well, it says review and revise. So, so. Your review might show it was or was not necessary, and therefore, if it was, you would. Mm -hmm. One could say that the city council's action to allow, planning commission and city council's mm -hmm. action to allow apartments in our commercial zone district would be just that exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, to me, you, you continue, you're doing what you're practicing, what you're preaching. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, review and revise. Okay. Are you okay then? Yeah, kind of clears it up a cloudy a little bit. But. Yeah, you can't use the review and or revise because if you revise, you have to review too. So it's you probably need them both. You don't need the word or. Anything well, else? Page, could I ask a question about page third, the map on page thirty? Yes. City. But I'm just saying, uh, these are all tax forfeit. Typically, you have a reference to where you got the information from, similar to the jury's question that we're talking about later. Yeah, we pulled all data from the county. We definitely can date it. Uh, we pull our data from the county quarterly. Um, and we can do it. So I just think it would be important to add that somewhere on here. Can we do it both to the tax forfeit map, this one, and then the next page as well? Yep, I had my next question. Just add a reference to, we just maybe make that for the data map that we pull, like kind of a part of it. On, it on this one, I'm going to have a, you know, on other maps, I make reference to page 37 and 64. You identify publicly owned map or publicly owned properties. You just scroll for it, right inside here. Um, if you go to page 37 and 64, you can see there's big swaths that aren't included. But that's the consistency. Recreational amenity. However, it kind of contradicts it because we do illustrate DNR land on them, yep, which would be on the right side of the map. Do you feel that we should show parking open space? The true intent is just to visually illustrate how much public land is. Yes, on um, page 37. So what you just, I circled before was this area here is not shown. 
But I, I'm so glad you brought this page up because um, City Beach couldn't find number four where it's located. As long as we're on clerical errors then, are questions? On pages 9 and 13, there are six instances where we refer to this as a 2019 plan. I'm sure that's what it's called consistently throughout the review. But if you did that search for 2019 and swept project, not always is that applicable because we talked about meetings in 2019, but there are six questions on pages 9 and 13, and I'll give you my notes that show 2019 plan. Good catch. Hey, can we jump back to, can we get feedback on if you want to see city parkland on the publicly owned map? What's your thought? Yeah. Why wouldn't we? Does it get too cluttery? Mm -hmm. No? No. No. We'll just that. So just to be clear, are you going to put a reference in there too, or some indication of, you know, in other words, this map is not 25 years old. It was from this quarter, blah, blah. Okay, mm -hmm. good. And we'll do that for every map. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Jerry did the the, re, the revision. We were talking about some of the the uh, uh, I think it was the uh, housing vacant houses versus not that. Did that get resolved in this revised plan? Well, I think we're still going to talk about some census information yet. Okay. We can go forward. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay.
and a household of 961. Um, and those numbers are pretty consistent with building permits that have been issued, and uh, it's consistent with the 2.59 persons per household that was projected in the census. Um, and later in the plan, there's also a reference to the, the uh, county housing mm -hmm. study that was done. That's more consistent with the growth than regressing in the population. County white and city mm -hmm. So I'm uh, just looking for some consistency, I think. Can I, can I jump in? Sure. Uh, there, so these demographic snapshots utilize the American Community Survey 2016 numbers. So there is a margin of error there. It doesn't seem like you can use the census data because that's so old and there's no interpolation up other than using the other two sources you just mentioned. So it seems like maybe one of those other two sources, but seems to me the demographers would be fully up to date. I think they're going to be closer to the projections because I do. they I do. get the building permit reports on an annual basis and a monthly basis, actually. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, they tend to use those numbers uh, also if, in fact, there was state aid to be given to the city, which this city doesn't get any state aid, but mm -hmm. it isn't. But any other city would be using the demographer's estimates. I think from, even from a practical standpoint, noting that there were that many building permits between 2000 and the census, and today would indicate that there is some growth mm -hmm. and there isn't really a regression. Mm -hmm. We most certainly can swap that. I do want to point out items like vacancy rate, you know, the demographer isn't going to provide that for us. Census will. So we can note, maybe, let's think of a way on how we can appropriately reference all this data because the vacancy rate is not provided by <coughs> Minnesota's demographer's office. It's provided by the American Community Survey. Two different methodologies. I would think, though, if you reference the, the, uh, the county housing survey, at a later oh, time. The new one? Well, you reference it in here. Yeah. You should be consistent with that. Mm -hmm. Minimal. Don't you do comp plans for other communities? Mm -hmm. What do they do? Mixture. It's normally a mixture. I would say the American Community Survey is. I don't. I don't want to say the the chosen, uh, but that's normally the method that's leveraged because it provides such a so much more data to it so like that mm. vacancy rate it gives you that housing profile so we love that together i think when larry brought all this up a, a little bit ago he was referencing that whole vacancy rate thing and i think we're all mystified by that number that we saw about the vacancy yeah, rate what does it mean we don't know what it means the housing vacancy rate yeah, that implies that there's 42 percent or whatever mm -hmm. that are empty, and we know that's not true. Mm -hmm. Now we have seasonal people. That doesn't make it empty. So vacancy rate is pulled off of structure, okay? So when a census, is, when the, the data is sent to you, so in this case it's a, it's a survey. So not everyone is. It's an estimate. And if you do not respond to it within the time, that house is considered vacant, which is reflective of the seasonal nature of town. Crowley County is it's reflective of that. So you have a very high vacancy rate because not all of your homes are yearly occupied. So, so then it's maybe, very interesting. maybe that should be stated somewhere in the plan so that anybody reading it doesn't think half of our houses are empty. Um, you know, can it be stated something including seasonal housing? Mm -hmm. I think we have some language in there implying that it's indicative of a historic community. Yeah, mm -hmm. a, a late community. But it, it's it's very interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you're right. If anyone were to look at it and say, "Holy smokes!" So you know, all the all the houses are empty. You know, mm -hmm. half of them. If nothing else, like I say, maybe a footnote is this takes into account seasonal mm -hmm. housing. Sure, asterisk it. 
fold it. Yep. And dip it. Yep. I have a question too um, on page nine, and I've bugged Patrick about this about way too many times. I'm curious why you didn't include the 2010 comp plan in your list of comp plans. Good question, Peggy. Um, we, we certainly can add a narrative on that. Um, well, I, I, I'm just even looking at the list. The narrative maybe isn't necessary. It was updated in 2016, but you list them as 1991, 97, and 2016. Looks like we went 20 years without a plan, and that's not accurate. Let's just yeah. add. Do you have a plan from all of this discussion? Are you going to change anything? All, everything that we've been visiting up. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, re, we'll amend our memo to show this additional layer of changes. Mm -hmm. What we'll do over the next three weeks, and we'll continue this conversation here, but um, just what we're going to do with this, we'll do the exact same thing. We're going to make a memo of the changes that we made based on the discussion that's happening tonight. Uh, and then that will be, you can have email that out, that will also be um, assuming that, that this is a, a recommended to go to council, that will go to the council packet. If the planning commission does not feel it is ready to go to the, the council, uh, you do have the option to table it and have, have this come back um, to the January if you're not comfortable, if you want to see those changes um, uh, back again. Um, that is an option that you have, so, you know, that is, yeah, that's something you consider. Yeah, that said, and because you're really referring to this whole document as a, a working tool, um, I guess we can, like I say, footnote or other, we can make pencil changes as we go along throughout the year, so it's, I don't know if we need to table it, but maybe if other people are uncomfortable. I think we ought to move on. I don't, yeah. I'm not in favor of tabling it. No, I'm neither. So we can, can, we, can we consider recommending approval of the comprehensive plan based on sure. our motion mm -hmm. and based on some of these other discussions? It doesn't need to be another public hearing, no. We can make the recommendation um, to approve the plan with the additions that or the comments that were discussed or pending, that the comments were addressed, um, some type of motion like that. Your process is that you want to have all your questions done first. You then close the public hearing. Then you go to item F on your agenda. Okay, so we're not to F yet. So we're, do we still have any, does anybody else have any comments or suggestions? Is the yeah, passing the still? Is the public still? You would ask the chair if yeah. you speak. Uh, Mark Miller, 32255 West Street. <clears throat> so um, I agree with you, Larry, about the asterisk uh, uh, pointing out to the vacancy or maybe as an option, uh, complete removal of it if it's not a necessity because it's essentially saying that yes, half of our homes are empty. Uh, feel free to come rob us. Uh, including those that are here year-round, like uh, I'm assuming everyone here tonight. Um, also, with the tax forfeited parcels, uh, as a builder uh, in the area, I did purchase nine of them in the Delwood Acres area. Uh, so maybe the map that they're using, rather than a quarterly update, as previously mentioned, it might be important to, uh, prior to the release, have, have something that's consistent with, with those, because I would hate for someone to think that one of my lots is available when it's not, and or uh, some of the lots that are not buildable because they're on uh, no maintenance roads. Um, someone may go into the county and they can buy it to build on a camp on it, whereas the city ordinance obviously will uh, restrict them from that. So that's, that's my opinion, and thank you. Thank you. The comment was kind of made, do we want to, uh, the vacancy rate, if it's, if it's basically what we look at as being a meaningless statistic up there, 
Yeah, cut it out. It doesn't, it doesn't provide any information. Well, it provides information, just not good information. You're right, it doesn't probably, the representation doesn't tell the story of what the context is behind it. So, you know, again, if it's the recommendation of the Planning Commission to just have it removed to clean it, you know, we, that's, yes. that's an easy fix. We can always print stuff. Do you need a motion for Yes, that? I guess. If you want to, you know, I don't want to speak for, for Patrick, but I mean, if you want to have a collective motion for all of your comments at the end, Maybe you could do that instead of having an individual, but I'll refer to the city administrator if you have a preferred different approach. Okay. That being said, does anybody have any objections to removing that one graph? No. No. Okay. So you can include that in there, and we'll include it in some kind of a big generic motion at the end that Tracy will make. <clears throat> you got a good memory. Well, have you closed the public hearing yet? No. We're still. Well, I can't make a motion then. Not, no. You know, you get Mr. Landecker. Got to hear, hear from the rest of the public. <laughs> uh, good evening, David Landecker. I, I don't really have a lot of points to discuss. I went through the plan and understand the dynamics of how it gets used. So, I mean, I know it's a working document that allows you to go through your goals and things like that. But listening to the conversation tonight just on a few of the items, you already made a motion on the one with the affordable housing. And I understand the direction you went with why you went to construction, but I'm almost wondering if the word affordable was the word that really needs to get stricken or changed. And that was what's bogging people down as to what it is. Because really, if you go through the comp plan, it talks about that the city wants diverse housing opportunities in the community. It doesn't really talk about affordable or expensive or you know, multifamily, it talks about diverse. And um, so, it, again, it's immense on words, but it's it's sort of like for the county and the city and the state and everybody to come up with funding strategies is a good thing. It's just, it's the whole objective of people get misunderstand what terminology of affordable is. They drive it right to what they think it is, and that's um, housing for those in need. Um, okay. So just, you don't need to do anything more that you already made the motion, but I wanted to indicate that. The other thing, your discussion on the demographic part of it, the numbers, um, and this is again from experience here, you know, we just went through a couple of years ago, and it presented to the Planning Commission on the North Star project, uh, a road study that was done for Crow Wing County, and that was done with the demographers' numbers, and to... Um, Jerry's point, that study projected not only what was happening um, in recent moments, but also over a 30 year period. And the projected growth there that the engineers had, had came up with was 2 to 3% growth over the course. So any planning that was being done on County Road 11 was to be done based on seeing a growth within the city over those time periods of 2 to 3%. Per year or yes. total? No, per year. Per year. So the numbers in that study projected every year, I think it was 2.5% that study reflected. Now that I'm just, I don't have the study in front of me, and so I can't tell you exactly, but it was, you know, someplace between 2 and 3% that that was noted um, from the data that they that they were able to gather from the state. So I just thought I would throw that in there just so that you had some reference to um, a study that had been done that had used that demographer's data. So other than that, I mean, I, I uh, you know, gone through the plan and I know that, you know, you're getting down to the final moments of it and um, I thought it was well written and I understood it. I understand the goals and objectives and uh, you got your hands full. Thank you. Okay. Can I, I'm gonna comment a little bit on your, on your, the word affordable, of course, like I say, it's as vague as it comes as to what's affordable to one person isn't affordable to another. But by having the word affordable in there, I think it, it encourages, uh, and it's also smart business, but if a person is putting in a, an apartment complex, some of the units might be studio 
uh, rentals, which then would be, you know, way less than, than if he's got a three bedroom in the same building. Or if we look at affordable being, gives us maybe more leeway to do stuff in some smaller lots within the city where right now we might say they're not buildable, but we could make, we could maybe consider uh, uh, a variances to allow a smaller house in there because then it fits in that, that affordable category. So I don't, you, don't, you don't have to be affordable. I don't think it hurts anything to have it in there. We had a discussion about that terminology of a year or so back, as I recall. And I think what, you know, we talked about, could we call it moderate, could we call it, and we threw out a lot of words. And we came back to affordable with the understanding that we weren't going to talk about subsidized. In mm -hmm. other words, affordable was generic, but we wanted to make sure that there was no place that said subsidized housing was going to be part of the terminology. Um, I, I understand what you're saying, David, that affordable you know, is, is such a generic term, but, but it also implies that you can have many different economic levels of housing, and um, some would be affordable for us and some wouldn't, so. But I'm not asking you to change it. No, no, I know. Okay, okay. yeah, because it, it, just have it, even having it, it doesn't put our hand in the fire saying we have to do something. That's just saying that we're, we're hoping to make some housing available for people who are uh, uh, working at the service industry jobs. I, I always think of it this way, is that at some point in time, somebody much with a lot more power than I have will grab this document, and it could be an attorney who's representing somebody else that says, you say in your comprehensive plan that you will work with a group of agencies to come up with a method to provide affordable housing. And they have a different opinion about what affordable housing is than what you just described to me. And that's, you know, and it's fine, leave it the way it is. Yep. I'm just I'm just picking because you can pick that in any piece of this implementation process. You can go through and pick all kinds of different words out to argue about. So, um, leave it the way it is. You, you described to me exactly why you use the word, and I'm, and I'm fine with that. It'd be nice if you had a description in there of this is what we say affordable housing equals. Not subsidized, blah, blah, blah. Can I speak to that real quick? I, there's 105 pages here, and for some reason I cannot find this definition, but I, I'm not going to bet money on it. But I believe there was reference in here of what truly is affordable. So the Minnesota Housing Partnership and also HUD, they outline what affordable housing means. And they say that it's 30% of your income should be spent on housing. Anything more than that, you're considered cost burden, and your banker is going to tell you the same thing. So I'm going to dig through here to see if that definition is in there. But it's meant to paint that general picture of it's a golden practice we all should be practicing. 30%. And I, I think it would be helpful for you to always frame your discussion with having that definition in here so you can refer, refer back to it. So it's your decision at the end of the day, but I would recommend you consider, if I can't find it right now, that you let us put that definition. I don't remember right. seeing it in there, but I would agree that if to have it would not be a bad idea. I do remember during some of the workshops we discussed it specifically, and I, and I think I recall the percentage, you know, Affordable is 30% of the average income or of the income. Yeah. So we got two ways to do it. Get, get all the service people to raise their rates, in which case we'll close up. Or... Yeah, the rates will go up if, they, if that's what it takes to get yeah. employment. Yeah. I would urge you to make sure there is that definition. Definition in there. Does that help you too? Yeah. Okay. Okay, any other comments from the public or the commission? Or the staff? <laughs> okay.
Okay. Um, we'll close the public hearing. And official action is to consider approval of the comprehensive plan with the various modifications that have been talked about. I would make the motion that this council, for this uh, commission. commission recommends to the city council that this be approved based upon the additions that we've come up with tonight, including the, the one that was an, under a motion, including the one that includes the definition of affordable housing and a couple other items. I second. There's a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Roger? No. Okay. Trace, no. Me neither. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't have to vote. Motion carries. We can move on to G. Any other business to do, discuss tonight? Hearing none, uh, we'll go to H, which is open forum number two. Probably the same response we had at open forum number one. And that's nobody. We're still, we're still having open forum number two available for you. <laughs> I guess the jury included the BRBO information. We wanted to make sure you were aware that we have some comments on that for jury's contact at the county about. Specifically, how will it interact with the city's already adopted policy? The intent was just to let you know that the county is working on a policy that's supposedly countywide, but we have some concerns as far as how to address it in Breezy Point, quite frankly. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else? We're adjourned. <laughs>